The Israeli military has announced it has pulled all but one brigade of its soldiers from southern Gaza. They did not provide any further details about the withdrawal. But Israeli media reports say ground operations are now likely to focus on intelligence-based targeted raids only. Local media is also reporting that the remaining troops will still guard the corridor separating North and South Gaza that was constructed by the Israel Defense Forces. For more, I'm now joined by Marina Miran, a military analyst and associate professor at King's College London. Uh, Marina, what does this withdrawal mean on the ground? Hello, Melissa. Well, given the situation on the ground, this withdrawal will mean that, well, obviously there will be still one brigade in the south, which in Israeli terms would be one, uh, one to 2,000 troops on the ground. However, the nature of the military operation in Gaza will change, and I expect a much slower pace in terms of the airstrikes that we have seen before that claimed many civilian lives. So it will be much more focused. And um, obviously, this will also have an effect on the plans to enter Rafah, which I think are now, at least for the time being, are off the table. Is this off the table for the time being over the next few weeks? Is it possible for the military to regroup and eventually uh, take that ground offensive on Rafa? That's a big question I think a lot of people are wondering. What we have to understand here is that it doesn't depend on the military. The military is an instrument of politics and the political situation, and I think it was essentially a political decision to withdraw the troops from South and Gaza because of the mounting international pressure after the killings of aid workers on the one hand. On the other hand, Israel needs international support, the US and the UK support, and both countries have voiced concerns over and over again. We have UN Security Council resolutions Solutions. We also have today um, ceasefire talks in Egypt. So depending on what the outcome of those talks will be, that will determine the future course of the operation. And we also have to understand that Israel also is expecting a retaliatory strike by Iran. Whether it will be directly by Iran or by Hezbollah, we do not know. But Israel itself needs troops, and it's been mobilizing reservists, which has been harming Israeli economy. And then you have the population and the pressure on the Netanyahu government and the protests inside Israel. So the situation for Israel is quite complicated. Therefore, I think that reducing the pace of the situation until some of these factors can get normalized to a certain extent is a wise choice to wait out. Therefore, I cannot say whether it will be in a week or two or maybe in a couple of months. It all depends on these um, conjunction of factors I just named. Now, Israel says the goal uh, to eliminate Hamas's Han Yunus brigade there have been reached, and that's one of the reasons why they can leave. Uh, how, how possible is to verify that? Well, we don't have more intelligence than what the Israeli military says, unfortunately. And yes, we have those gains. However, in the grander scheme, it is not enough to reach the military objectives that um, Israel has set. Therefore, I think, of course, they, they say that they have reached one of the objectives to explain their activities, because right. it would be too difficult to name all the political implications that these military activities have caused. Therefore, I think that um, maybe Israel will also need to recalibrate its military aims and create a viable political aim for Gaza, because the military cannot in itself solve the problem. Marina Miran, a military analyst and associate professor at King's College London, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And in the studio, I'm now joined by DW Middle East analyst Shani Rosanes. Uh, Shani, why do you think this is happening now? Is it because of U.S. Uh, uh, pressure? Um, it, it was very clear that the Americans did not want to see a ground invasion of Rafah. That's true, but if you ask Israelis officially, then no, this has nothing to do with international community pressure, which we've been seeing mounting in last week following the killing of aid workers in the Strip. Um, it could be that they were just using the fact that it's a six-month anniversary and trying to make it not connect. Otherwise, 
not connected to any certain events, but sort of make it symbolic. But the military has been winding down, down operations in the last couple of weeks, and they've been saying that they don't have any need to leave the soldiers exposed. You know, once they are in Gaza and they're not maneuvering, they're not in action, um, then they're exposed to maybe uh, targeted um, attacks by Hamas militants. They don't want to do that. Um, so for now, I mean, and IDF, the way they try to sell it, it's always been part of the plan. Um, it does not mean anything about Rafah because um, any action taken in Rafah will have to be taken only after the population has been evicted. This is something the Americans are demanding. Israel has agreed to that, and that will take weeks and weeks. Uh, what does this withdrawal mean for this ceasefire deal that never seems to happen, but always so close, right? Yeah, that, that's an interesting question because Israel has always, you know, officially tried to, to, to say that the only way to get Hamas to get any concessions and agree to anything on the uh, on the negotiations about the hostage deal is through applying military pressure and a lot of it. And this is what they've been doing in the last uh, six months. We've seen over 32,000 Palestinian casualties due to that pressure. Um, and so Israel kind of withdrawing its forces, it also means a slow... Uh, withdrawal of that position of, of only pressure will be the one bringing any any um, breakthrough in the negotiations. It could be connected to the fact that now we are no, we know that the talks are being resumed. There's going to be a new delegations going, you know, in and out of Cairo in the next days. Maybe we're in a point now uh, right. where most points have already been agreed on and now what's on the table has nothing to do with that. It's hard to say. We really don't know what's happening between closed doors uh, in those negotiations and talks. I mean, it has been six months. Um, how has the view of... I mean, I know it's a very divided country, lots of different opinions, but uh, how has the country changed in terms of its perspective on the conflict? Well, I think there's a slow understanding that something isn't working. You know, Netanyahu kept saying in a very confident voice again and again, Israel will keep on fighting until the complete obliteration of Hamas. They are far from doing that. We've seen uh, rockets, you know, ro rockets uh, against Israel this day from from Gaza. You know, as if six months has not happened. So. It's clear something isn't working. It's clear there needs to be a change, but it's also clear there's going to be a political backlash from the right uh, side of Netanyahu who want to see more action and not less military action in Gaza. And we'll, we'll see how it unfolds in the next days. TW Middle East analyst Shani Rosanis, thank you so much. You're welcome, Lisa.